Hi everybody, Mark Moorhead here at the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm the Curator of Education. We are the largest historical firefighting museum in the world. And if you can't come into the museum, we love to bring the museum to you. And today we're going to talk a little bit of fire marks. And we're also going to talk about, we've talked recently about some saints. There's a lot of importance and significance to some of the famous saints. Uh, in the fire service. Uh, St. Florian from the Roman Catholic tradition is the patron saint of firefighting, among other things. And then uh, we talked about him recently. His fe uh, feast day is May the 4th. But we also talked recently about an Orthodox Catholic saint, St. Euphemia, whose feast day is September 16th. But everybody knows this guy's feast day. March 17th is the uh, feast day for St. Patrick. And St. Patrick was the principal uh, patron saint of Ireland. And this is a fire mark, and in the middle, it doesn't actually have a picture of St. Patrick on it, but it might as well because it's got the shamrock, which was the symbol of St. Patrick, and eventually has come to really be, for most of the world, kind of the symbol of Ireland. And this is a fire mark from the National Fire Insurance Company of Ireland in College Green, Dublin founded around 1822. Now, what is a fire mark, you ask? Well, These are fire marks. Everything you see up here is a fire mark. I'm just pointing this one out. But fire marks were how you used to acknowledge that you had fire insurance. The fire insurance uh, is believed to be the second kind of insurance ever developed, maritime insurance being the first. And it was uh, very, very expensive because of course, everybody had fire in their house every day, open flames, fireplaces, lamps, everything you can imagine had fire in it and there was a really good chance that you were gonna have a fire. And so fire insurance had to be pretty expensive because there was a really, really good chance they were gonna have to pay a claim at some point. And when you got it, you would actually hang one of these on your building, on your on your house or also on your, on your uh, building if you were a business and the reason that they were considered kind of prestigious was because it meant you were doing pretty well if you could afford insurance and so this one was Irish but you'll find that uh, if you look around the collection we have here at the museum we have them that have all sorts of national images whatever might happen to be uh, on these fire marks and sometimes if you go to Europe now especially you'll still see places that have fire marks on their businesses uh, as kind of a really now just kind of a ceremonial thing. You don't actually have to have them, but back in the day you did. They would make them a lot of times out of cast iron or something like that. And the idea was it was kind of your policy. If your house or your business burns down, you go through the ruins, you dust it off and you know, here's my policy, where's my money? Because we tend to forget this was the days before they had stuff like banks and, and safe deposit boxes and safes and things like that. And so uh, a lot of times you, you might otherwise be left without any proof that you were insured. And in the very early days of uh, fire insurance, the fire insurance company, a lot of times there were fire brigades that were attached just to that insurance company. And they might only fight your fire if you were uh, insured or maybe if your neighbor was insured they'd still fight your fire so that his house didn't catch on fire uh, but it was a uh, they weren't really very incentivized to fight a lot of uninsured properties and this led to some real real problems by about the turn of the century by about 1800 public ill will at people only showing up for the fires of insured uh, properties were so strong that most of the volunteer brigades in Europe and America and a lot of other places they would just respond to all calls but in the early days sometimes and there was a little bit of profit motive because even though these were volunteer firefighters if they succeeded in preventing or lessening a claim they might make some pretty decent money uh, so the, the insurance company would pay them off a little bit. And it also led, of course, to competition between the fire brigades, which sometimes turn kind of ugly and violent. But that's a story for another day. For today, St. Patrick and the Shamrock representing the fire insurance company uh, there in Dublin back in the early 1800s. I'm Mark. This is the Hall of Flame Museum. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.